Okay, when it comes to hormone optimization, you have to look at the master control hormones. And out of the master control hormones, one is prominent. It's the most important one to optimize. And that one is leptin. Leptin was discovered in the 1990s. It's actually in fat cells and communicates with the brain to let you know when it's time to stop eating. So it's essentially our natural fuel gauge. Just like when you fill up gas, you know when you're low and then you know when to stop. It's not just some arbitrary experience. You don't just go, well, I don't know if I need gas, but let me just put some in. And then when all the gas starts spilling out, you stop. That's, so we have a fuel gauge in our car, we have a fuel gauge in our body when it's working properly. So when you eat a meal, leptin levels start rising. And once they start rising, you get less hungry. And you get to a point where your muscles, your cells, your liver have all been completely nourished and you don't need any more nutrition because if you continue to eat, it's going to result in nutrient spillover, which is a fancy way of saying you're gonna increase your fat ass. You're gonna have extra energy going to places you don't want it to go to. So when leptin is working properly, it tells us when to stop eating. Now, one of the keys to make sure that leptin kicks in is you wanna eat slowly. Most of you motherfuckers eat way too fast. And I know this because I eat lunch with people all the time and I'm a fourth of my way through my meal and the other person's already done. Eat too fucking fast, slow the fuck down. Chew your food thoroughly. 30 chews with each swallow. I'm talking about food here. And you're gonna have way better digestion. You're not gonna be farting on command. Some of you guys are flatulence machines. You're destroying the ozone layer with your, <laughs> with your gut distress. Your nutrient timing is poor. You need to work on that. So one easy way to improve your digestion that doesn't cost a thing is slowing down. Every time I go out to dinner, the waiter comes over three or four times. Are you done, sir? Are you done, sir? Because I eat slowly. I take my time. I'm not in a big rush, especially if I'm having a good conversation with somebody. I'm not gonna just keep piling in food. So slow down, chew your food thoroughly. Make sure you pick the right food choices. For me on a vegan diet, I like to get all of my calories from legumes, nuts and seeds, fruits and vegetables, mushrooms, and that's essentially it. I'll have some junk every once in a while for fun, but for the most part, those are the food groups that I choose from, and they all work really well for me. This is real food supplying lots of micronutrients. So instead of just getting macronutrients, there are plenty of foods such as processed protein bars. They're high in macronutrients, protein, fat, carbs, but they're extremely low in micronutrients and polyphenols. So you're eating not completely empty calories, but you're not getting the most bang for your buck. What you want is food that gives you maximum nutrition with minimum energy expenditure on your part to get that maximum nutrition. So real food from those food groups I mentioned, that's what you wanna prioritize, that's what you wanna focus on. Also take longer stretches in between each meal. Instead of eating every two, three hours, what happens then is you're, you're never letting hunger dictate when you eat, you're never hungry. So nothing tastes good, everything tastes like fucking chalk when you're eating frequently, and it's always inconvenient. Oh, it's been two hours, I better eat something. And then God forbid you miss one of those meals, your blood sugar crashes and <laughs> you're making your body less efficient. And you're not going to store body fat in between meals because there's no time in between meals. And three hours after you eat, insulin, glucose levels start dropping and then you're gonna to go to store body fat for energy. But if you're eating every couple hours, that never happens. You're always relying on the food that's coming in. You're not going to your stored body fat, not as much. It was basically, it's high frequency eating was more of an approach for people that are trying to put on weight. And then somehow it became popularized as a weight loss regimen. And, People say, well, you know, you bump up your metabolism every time you eat a meal. Yeah, you bump up your metabolism to process the food you just ate. Now let's get back to leptin here because leptin sets your metabolic rate. Here's why it's important. It's not just our natural fuel gauge. It's also, it also sets the, the metabolic rate in your body, not just for fat burning, but for energy expenditure. People hear metabolism, they think, okay, fat burning. And yeah, it, 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 there's a correlation there or a connection there, but metabolism is also total energy expenditure. So when leptin is sensitive, you're producing a small amount to get the maximum return, your energy expenditure is set high. So your metabolism is higher, but also your energy allocation towards things such as production of sex hormones, recovery from workouts. You wanna be in this thriving state where you have high levels of energy. 
And regarding supplements for leptin, anything that helps with insulin resistance is going to help with leptin resistance. So apple cider vinegar, or lipoic acid, berberine, these are all great supplements, but they're supplements. They're not going to take the place of a clean diet, optimal exercise, interval training. Sprinting has been proven to improve leptin sensitivity and insulin sensitivity, so that's not a big surprise. Like I said, anything that improves insulin sensitivity will improve leptin sensitivity. They work hand in hand. Insulin is what gets all the energy into the muscle cells and liver. And leptin is what says, okay, let's stop allocating, let, let's stop taking in calories because everything that we consume now is just gonna go to store body fat. We don't need any more. So chew your food slowly, take your time, better food choices, longer stretches in between each meals, make sure your stress is in check, you get a good amount of sleep each night because if you're sleep deprived, that also accelerates insulin resistance and leptin resistance. And that's it. If you want more on this, get my hormone optimization lecture series. It's eight hours. I put it out in 2012, but the information is still relevant. It's eight hours of high quality content, MP3 files. That's available at MikeMahler.com. And there's also an article on leptin where I get into this topic a little bit more at MikeMahler.com.